Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this uh, lecture with a thought process. Patriotism is a feeling of unbreakable bond with the land of your birth, which indicates your own personal sense of worth and respect for your common heritage and culture. Right? You please mull about it because uh, you know, like we are in the August month, and uh, it's the independence. Lot of work uh, being done by our ancestors to get freedom from the British rule. So uh, uh, let us recall what we learnt in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we had initiated a discussion about the how to calculate adiabatic flame temperature, right? And uh, if you recall that I had asked one question, right? What is that question? That question is that if it is not a flow system, that means if it is a closed system where chemical reaction is taking place, which happens to be exothermic, that means combustion is taking place, you need to calculate the adiabatic flame temperature. How we are going to do that? Is it the same thing we will do? Whatever we have done for the burner or a closed system? that is HP is equal to HR, right? For a closed system, can I write down HP is equal to HR? HP is equal to HR for finding out, for finding out T adiabatic, can I do? Certainly no, this will be wrong, this is not right, then what it would be? It will be U P is equal to U R, this is right. What is that U? U is basically internal energy of the product is equal to internal energy of reactant. Are you getting? Is not it? What is that? We know that delta Q minus delta W is equal to du. This is your first law of thermodynamics for closed system, right? So, work done is 0, it is adiabatic process that is 0, that is nothing but du, du is nothing but up is equal to ur product, the internal energy of product is equal to internal energy of reactant. Okay. That is why please keep this in mind, because I have seen lot of people always say HB is equal to HR, just now you some of you told, but that is not true. Okay. And beside this, also we looked at in the last lecture, the Cp value of the product and the reactant plays a very important role to find for finding out accurate value of the adiabatic temperature, right? And what we did in that case, we have taken some average values or a constant values and calculated the adiabatic temperature uh, in the last example, right? That is pentane, uh, you know, uh, one mole of pentane reacting with the uh, air and giving to the, of course, excess air. Right, if you recall that example. But in real situation, you know, we have looked at a sensible enthalpy. If you look at this is uh, CPI and I, right, dt, T naught to T adiabatic, right. This is your sense enthalpy. What I will do, Cp is a function of temperature, I need to integrate. That means, I need to find out Cp basically I is a function of A0, A1t plus A2t square plus A3t cube, right. 
and plus some more constant will be there and this a naught a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 that may some more things will be coefficients can be obtained from a table. These are data you should get and then put that thing here and then integrate it. That means, I will have to get an i c a naught plus a 1 t plus a 2 t t square plus a 3 t 3 square like that it goes on right d t. And this is of course, uh, for what you call enthalpy of the product you can say and sensible S is for sensible ok, sensible enthalpy. And if I want to handle that way the reactant when it is not the same as the 298 Kelvin therefore, I will have to again take care of the sensible enthalpy of the reactant H and I C P I D T T naught by T, T can be any temperature it may be 500, 600, 300 anything right that way. So, that you will have to take care of that. So, now of course, as I told that in the product side the constituents need not to be known you need to invoke the equilibrium you know uh, condition to find out the what will be the product you know uh, number of moles is there in the product of each constituent or the products. And then you can calculate if you do that then you can use basically iterative procedure what we are going to discuss in the subsequent lecture. But uh, if you uh, do all those calculations then you can get a temperature data right. As I told that adiabatic temperature is a function of what equivalence ratio or the fuel air mixture right and it will be a function of what pressure it will be function of phi pressure initial pressure initial temperature right. So, adiabatic temperature of a typical fuel at a stoichiometric mixture what we are looking at right. This is at phi is equal to 1 stoichiometric mixture means phi is equal to 1. If you look at methane if the initial temperature is 300 Kelvin of course, I am saying 0.1 mega Pascals you will get uh, something 2200 Kelvin right. But if I increase this to pressure that means it is a you know 0.1 now it is 2 mega Pascals right. So, temperature is 2270 Kelvin very very less temperature difference you could see right. But now, instead of 300 Kelvin initial temperature, I have doubled it 600. So, you are getting 2000, of course, the pressure is uh, same, this pressure is same. So, you are getting 2500 Kelvin, right, ok. Now, instead of air, I will use oxygen. What will happen? This will be getting 3030 Kelvin. Why it is so? because nitrogen is an inert gas. So, that will be taking a large amount of heat which will be absorbed in the product when the product is not you know it is not really dissociated. So, therefore, that will be taking large amount therefore, the temperature reduces ok. And if I go for propane air instead of methane we will go for propane air you will get 2 to 7 8 Kelvin like 2200, 2708 you know not much difference. And if I go for hydrogen air right equivalent say you will get 2390 Kelvin and in somewhere you may get 2400 Kelvin we keep in mind right. And hydrogen oxygen you get again the same order 3080 Kelvins in this one atmosphere or 0.1 mega Pascals. And carbon monoxide of course, you get the 2400 Kelvin see carbon monoxide generally it is not being considered as a fuel, but however, if you use some producer gas right kind of things and then you will get CO air and also coke oven gas and other gases. 
it is very high temperature as compared to the hydrocarbon. But if you look at hydrocarbon air on an average it will be something 2200 to 2300 Kelvin you know roughly all hydrocarbons most of the hydrocarbons right hydrocarbon air keep in mind ok. So, sir we can always assume uh, if, if uh, our numerical contains the hydrocarbon uh -huh. we can uh, always guess yeah yes yes the yes 2000 and then you can do that 2200 you can guess and then find it out provided it is stoichiometric if it is not stoichiometric if it is a lean mixture it will be lower if it is a rich mixture what will happen it will be definitely also lower ok because fuel is not being you know consumed not all heat being released because less oxygen is there right. So, therefore, it also will that means peak temperature where it will be occurring stoichiometric not strictly we will see now that let us look at effect of equivalence ratio on adiabatic flame temperature right. So, uh, what I have taken here this is a methane air system and this is your peak value right this is your 1 is it peak for 300 Kelvin this graph is for 300 Kelvin black one this adiabatic temperature here and this is equivalence ratio this is 5 is it peak here no peak is somewhere here right peak is here this values now for the lean side right what is happening this is your fuel lean this side is fuel lean mixture lean mixture this is side is fuel rich mixture again the temperature also is dropping down both the side but the drop in the lean side is lower the slope is stiffer and it is a little uh, smaller as compared to lean side in the this side. Keep in mind that the flame temperature highest flame temperature generally for a hydrocarbon you will be getting around this is again approximation around 1.05 right in some case it may be 1.03 in some case may be 1.04 but approximately 1.05 you will be getting. And uh, of course, uh, I have already told if there is a increase in temperature what will happen? The nature of the curves remains same that means you know the adiabatic temperature will be lower on the fuel lean side and uh, the this side also it will be lower peak will be around equivalence ratio 1 right it will be peak values here, but there is a increase in this if a particular equivalence we say there is a increase in temperature right increase in adiabatic temperature right both the lean and this side even at stoichiometric. And uh, as I told why it is so why it is happening because here if it is 300 Kelvin or 298 Kelvin you can say right this term will be 0, but if it is 600 Kelvin that means this is the contribution from the sensible enthalpy which will be reflected in your adiabatic temperature right because already you are having and certain heat being released you know then naturally it will be added to that. So, now uh, look at this uh, effect of initial temperature and adiabatic I am just elaborating little bit more further that you can see that uh, these are the corresponding two what you call this is phi is equal to 1 and this is phi is equal to 0.5 and this is phi is equal to 1.5 and it goes on increasing with the temperature right. And keep in mind that if you go on increasing the temperature like what is happening the temperature is increasing. But if it will go beyond let us say something 3000 Kelvin you know like some higher temperature you are increasing. Now, what will happen there will be dissociation which will be occurring as a result the temperature would not be increasing further 
right, which I have not shown in this diagram, but it will happen because of uh, some heat energy will be utilized for dissociating the product, right, stable spaces, and as a result, temperature will be dropping down, right. Nowadays, people are basically using this um, energy, right, uh, from the product side and then uh, bringing to the uh, reactant sites such that you can utilize it that is known as recuperative burning right are you getting suppose there is a burner here and the product some of the things will be going out let us say from the engine exhaust right and that will be at high temperature so instead of that and then inlet temperature is lower so you take those product and then have a heat exchanger heat will be exchange between the exhaust gas from the exhaust gas to the inlet so that you will reuse those things which are going to the atmosphere or the some sink right so that is known as recuperative therefore a lot of interest is going on to uh, you know preheat the fuel air mixture before combustion takes place right this is known as preheating combustion right preheated combustion so <coughs> let us now look at what happens to the pressure like effect of pressure if you look at initial pressure of the uh, these reactants there will be a steep increase in the pressure here right t adiabatic being plotted for, with respect to the pressure this is being increased and of course this will be uh, very steep but however with the, when it will be reaching something around 0.8 right mega pascal there won't be much change of course there is a slight change but this is much higher level right and this is because of fact that the change in the chemical composition at a high pressure will be negligibly small so therefore the changes won't be occurring in this region right so therefore uh, it is very important to take care like a uh, effect of pressure effect of initial uh, temperatures right you one should know you might be wondering why should we uh, look at the effect of pressure because you know most of the practical engines the combustion occurs at a higher pressure in case of your gas turbine engine for aero application for power generation internal combustion engine right at a high pressure now you should know what is happening the what will be the adiabatic temperature and keep in mind that adiabatic temperature is a theoretical one in actual situation it is not possible to have a adiabatic system right some amount of heat also will be transferred even if you are insulating it even if you are doing that in case of ic engine you might be knowing like we cool the engine wall right so also in case of gas turbine combustor so therefore lot of heat will be lost right you won't be achieving that temperature what is we will be calculating even right even realistic situation so you won't get that now to summarize about this adiabatic flame temperature as uh, we already know that uh, adiabatic flame temperature of fuel depends on what equivalence ratio or the fuel air mixture it will be depend on the initial pressure it will be dependent on the um, initial temperature and also the type of fuel and oxidizer it will be also depend of degree of completion of reactions that means extent of reaction is going on like whether it is completed or not if it is not completed naturally it will be different right and uh, it will be also as i told earlier that it will be dependent fuel layer ratio or the equivalence ratio and uh, if you look at for a specified fuel right let us say for methane air system or a propane air system at a specified state burned with the air right okay the adiabatic flame temperature attains its maximum value provided right complete combustion is taking place right with the theoretical amount of air that is the ideal situations right and there is a heat loss what is happening right if the heat loss and there is also incomplete combustion which will be taking place 
and then dissociation may take place also right the dissociation means like the product will be getting to the reactant as well right which may take place also then what will happen the product temperature what you will be getting will be less than the t maximum right and this maximum temperature in counter combustion system is generally lower than the adiabatic temperature that means adiabatic temperature what you will be getting is basically the theoretical one right so therefore you should keep that in mind and there won't be any combustion system where you will be measuring some temperature higher than the adiabatic if you are then something is wrong okay in your measurement or your calculations right you cannot get beyond that so therefore it is a thumb rule which is to be used or a indicator for you to judge whether it is your calculation is right or wrong your experiment is right or wrong or how it is varying like that way you will get some value and some calculation for initial calculation you can use in the uh, next lecture we will be basically looking at how to handle the compositions right at equilibrium condition because unless you know the equilibrium con conditions and also its composition you cannot really calculate the adiabatic flame temperature in real situation right is just we have done those calculations in the last lecture uh, basically uh, which can be carried out in a classroom right okay but it is it won't be the uh, right one to say oh that is adiabatic temperature no right for that you need to calculate equilibrium composition and uh, what do you mean by equilibrium combustion and when the equilibrium can occur and uh, all those things we will be discussing in the next lecture i will also uh, illustrate maybe subsequent lectures how to calculate adiabatic temperature while calculating the composition right so we'll stop over here thank you very much